Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint some easy daisies. These are uh, Black Eyed Susans, I think. And uh, we're going to show you step by step how to do it from start to finish. This will be a great beginner project, I think. I've got my husband Mark with me. Hey there, everybody. He's going to chat tonight for our live show. So if you have questions while I'm painting, you can ask those and I'll try to answer them. Let's get started. Alrighty, so I'm going to be using a 9 by 12 inch canvas panel. This is the uh, Belgian linen canvas board from Frederick's 9 by 12 inch. Uh, I think I already said that, but there you go. Uh, and I've coated it with a very light coat of yellow oxide. I used some glazing medium with the water um, just to give it a nice thin coat. And um, so we've got kind of a background to start with. It'll just give us a little head start tonight. Um, our brushes that we're going to be using are some filberts for our background mostly, number uh, 468 in the 6100 series, which is the long handles. What? You just went through that really fast, 468. And 124 in the rounds. And then I've got a Deerfoot stippler. I'm not 100% sure I'm going to use it and actually probably would want the bigger one, the 5 8 inch, but uh, let's just grab both of these in case we want to do some soft blending in the background, 5 8 and 3 8 inch uh, Deerfoot stipplers in the uh, blue select um, line from Princeton. And this is the Bristol Fan uh, 10 aught, And that'll be for some splatters, yes. Um, <laughs> And then I've got a quarter inch, three eighths inch angle brush and a number six filbert. I think the six filbert is gonna be our main brush for our flowers. Um, I might use the round ones instead. That's why I grabbed those. Um, so we'll, we'll just see how it goes um, and how the paint's acting tonight. Cause it's sometimes if the paint's a little bit thicker, um, I, the round brush might work better for us. Um, we'll just see. All right, uh, let's go over our paint colors. I've got Burnt Umber, Burnt Sienna, Quinacridone Burnt Orange. That's kind of an optional color, but uh, if you've got it, put it out. Yellow Oxide, Indian Yellow Hue, another kind of optional color. Uh, it's just kind of an orangey yellow. Cadmium Yellow Medium, Cadmium Yellow Light, it's just kind of more of a lemony yellow, bright, a little bit brighter. Um, Quinacridone Magenta, Doxazine Purple, Ultramarine Blue, Cobalt teal and phthalo green yellow shade. This is titanium white and unbleached titanium. If you don't have these exact colors, just use what you've got that's similar. Um, that will be just fine. And then this is our glazing medium that I like to use. It's called Gloss Glazing Liquid, and it's got a little bit of an ex drying, slow drying extender. Um, so it makes it a little bit easier to uh, paint these backgrounds and things. Gives us a little bit extra working time. And I'm spraying down my palette. Um, one thing I um, I didn't think about until tonight, I was filling out my water bottle because it was um, not full, and um, I was putting cold water in there, and I thought, you know, that's probably a good tip um, to pass on to you. So if you've got water, you could even keep your um, water bottle in the fridge or something like that. Um, using cold water on your paints will give you a little bit extra drying time, too. It'll evaporate less quickly. So um, just small tip i was like i should be doing that <laughs> nice tip yeah all right so let's kind of get going here on our background i'm not going to do any drawing tonight um we'll just kind of put in our background i did want to mention that i'm going to add just a little bit more blue there's a little touch of blue if you look in the corner um there's some blue kind of uh smoky blue so i'm definitely going to add that in and i might add some more on this side too and um if you want to add like other flowers to this or something like that and you're kind of not sure which ones will go with the daisies um, you can always use your pat your uh, color wheel or something um, if you've got one and um, check out your main color of your flowers so these are kind of yellow but they're really not a bright yellow they're kind of more of an orange yellow so I would go that for our main color and then if you look here there's like a little triangle here so you could use either like a turquoise like a green blue and a magenta um, with it, which is that cyan almost, uh, if you moved it one over, it would be that cyan and um, um, magenta and yellow kind of 
that's that kind of basic color that your printer probably uses. So we know that those are um, kind of the primary colors, obviously. But if you kind of want to get a little bit more fancy with it, you could do kind of a split complementary, and that's what we're going to be doing. So we're going to use violet. So instead of using um, brown, just brown, I'm going to add just a touch of purple in with our yellow centers of our flowers, or you know the little dark black centers. Instead of using black, I'm going to use a little bit of purple, and then we're going to use this blue, and we're going to probably do something in this range here. Um, for our background blue. So um, just a little thing. I don't count the green. Green, I, I, use, I usually just count it as a neutral because it really doesn't, um, unless it's like your main only focus color, um, then you can use it and kind of figure out your other colors from it. But I don't usually do that because you can mix the green from what we've got here. So I don't count, it doesn't count. Sorry, green. Poor green. <laughs> I know. It's not easy being green. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of green, it's St. Patty's Day. I've got my little um, St. Patrick's Day pin on here. He's really... Oh, there it is, yeah. <laughs> my lucky uh, lucky leprechaun pin. And I was going to pinch you too, but I guess I can't. No, you can't pinch me. I'm wearing him. I've had well, him since I was probably, I don't know, how old? Eight, maybe? <laughs> So about 20 years? It probably, exactly. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> that was good. That was good. <laughs> okay, so I've added um, pretty much equal parts yellow and green, and then added some white to tone it down so it's a little bit softer green. Yeah, that's really pretty. So we're going to just blend that in here. And then what I'm going to do, just leave some open spots. Here and there, and grab some of the darker green, a little bit of our ultramarine blue, maybe a little bit of burnt sienna. Burnt sienna just kind of tones it down, makes it a little bit more natural looking color. And we're going to use that down here. And I'm using this large number eight filbert. And I may, I may just use this for the whole background. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. I uh, might even use a little bit of purple. I know. Purple and green make a really pretty color. It's a great dark color to use for your greenery. And you said that the background is yellow ochre? Yellow oxide. Oxide. Mm -hmm. Which they're basically, um, they're very similar. They're kind pretty close. Interchangeable almost. Mm, losing just like a little bit of the brighter green here. that lighter green someone just asked is it possible to mix indian green or sorry indian yellow <laughs> um yeah you can it, yeah yes it's it's um i think it's a mixed color let me look and see if it says on the tube sometimes it'll say what it's mixed from it says it is Arilide yellow, nickel, complex, azo, and quinacridone. So it's probably um, like a tiny bit of, um, well, and quinacridone on its own, I don't really know what that color is. Quinacridone, it's got a quinacridone number here, mm -hmm. PBR206, so whatever that number oh. in the quinacridones is. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can use, I would probably start with yellow oxide, or I'm sorry, yellow um cadmium yellow medium which is a little bit more of that warm yellow and then add a little bit of an orange tone maybe a tiny bit of of the quinacridone magenta um to get it it's just kind of a bright yellow so <clears throat> let's use the speaking of bright yellows oh i thought you were gonna say speaking of bright i'm right here <clears throat> i'm gonna use the cadmium yellow light there and do some of that mix up a bright yellowy green I'm using that at the upper part and you can see I'm not really over mixing I'm trying not to blend too much um, and leaving these kind of fun juicy brush strokes showing so and I need to I didn't leave any room for my blue but we'll just add that in over the top and be fine So we'll get our green in there first. 
all these kind of different areas of green. There we go. And then I'm going to clean my brush out really well. <coughs> Hopefully this is not too dry yet. If it dries, if it's starting to get sticky, what you can do, like if you, you know, if you do this part and then you get over to here and this part has dried by the time you finish this part, um, just, just let this whole thing dry. So you may want to just take the hairdryer to it at this point and let it dry completely before you do the blue. Um, I'm going to hope that we have some time to work here. So I'm just adding white to my ultramarine blue. I want it to be kind of a nice vivid blue and adding the white kind of tones it down. Remember we were looking at that kind of smokier blue color and then we're going to be putting it over this wet green here. So it's going to kind of blend with it a little bit and tone it down some. And I can use a little bit darker blue in some places. And I'm just kind of being a little bit more strategic with this now, thinking about where that blue is peeking through. And there I said, I'm going to put some over here too. If your paint is dry and it's not blending at all, what you can do is just use this paint and put a little bit of, uh, do a second coat of that green or even mix a little bit of that blue in with it to do a few places with that blue. All right. Let me get some of the darker blue. So hello to everybody. Yeah. Welcome to the show. Hopefully you're doing well and staying safe and out of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a crazy you, world right now. You know those in those uh, painters, they're mm. kind of a rowdy bunch. We are. We are. Uh, Got to have a little bit of crazy to do this. <laughs> a, a little bit? <laughs> okay. I'm using a little bit of purple here, too, now. I guess it's relative. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm doing kind of a um, like lighter color here and darker around this side, so kind of creating a little bit of a... Um, vignette or focus in there in the center okay you can do as little or as much blue purple as you want this is just up to you totally your show here so just kind of have fun with it and they don't have to be flowers they can be whatever you want I don't know if they're going they're supposed to be flowers or what they are in the background here but I'm just putting them in and then what we can do is once this is dry, we can go back in and, and put in some even brighter over the top, you know, because right now over this wet green, it's going to tone it down a little bit and um, neutralize the color slightly. Hey, somebody asked, could they use a mop <coughs> brush to uh, help blend it? Sure. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. If you want it blended instead of having the brush stroke look, you just use the mop brush over the wet paint. Make sure that the paint is nice and wet. I'm losing my voice already. <coughs> okay. Thank you. You're welcome. And just a reminder that uh, <coughs> all the videos you did for Princeton, they they posted one about the mop brush this week. Oh, just yesterday. So cool. I shared a link in the Facebook group. Nice. I know. I um. I wish that they'd given me a script for doing those videos because some of them, like the audio is terrible. And I didn't realize, I thought that they were going to edit the audio. Um, and um, so some of them, like they'll have me saying the same thing like three times because I'm trying to give them a good, like a good copy of it, you know? So I'll say, um, you know, this brush is blah, blah, blah. And then I'll say it again. And then I'll say it again. <laughs> like they left one of them in where I'd done that. And I was like, oh, oh. So, <laughs> yeah, part of that deal was like, I just did the video and they were going to edit it. And so I was like, yeah, that's great, you know. But, um, but yeah, but the audio is really bad in some of them. I should have done some dubbing for them so that they, because if, you know, on my own, I would just go back in and dub it. 
to make it say what I want it to say because I'm I'm really bad with recordings. I don't know why. I just I feel much more natural just saying just doing it live. Even though I recorded those live with my Facebook people, I still kind of in the back of my mind still had that kind of thing where I knew that it was being recorded. I don't know. I'm weird. <sighs> yeah, you tend to do really well in the live shows. Yeah. But when you're recording something, you're, no. you're much more not good. conscious Stiff. of what you're saying yes. and doing. And yeah. I don't know why. All right. Using the burnt um, quinacridone burnt orange. If you don't have that, use burnt sienna and some quinacridone magenta, maybe a little bit of yellow. And I'm going to throw some of that in here. This is going to be kind of our neutral browns. They're just some... If you look at our photograph, there's some dark brown areas. In fact, we can add a little bit of brown, maybe a little bit of the purple and magenta. Use that. There we go. And I'm definitely going to add another layer of green in here. So um, this will not be our finished, you know, final version of this. So, and I'm going to mix this now, this purple-brown mixture. I'm going to mix it with some of my greens and do some back in here. This is a very kind of, again, you can do as little or as much of this as you want. We're just, I'm just kind of doing what's in that photograph mostly, so. I'm going to have you take this, honey, and dry it for me. Do you have a king of some beef jerky then? Nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so while he's doing that, I'm going to get out my notebook here and find a spot. There's our, our flower, there's our birdies. Find a clean spot. There we go. Here we go. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and use the. I'll use the round brush for this. This is a number four round. So I want to show you the brush strokes that we'll be using for our flowers. Um, we get for our daisies. I'm going to just use some. I'll use some of the Indian yellow and white there. Give us a bright yellow, and I want to thin out my paint with with my round brush. So I'm going to add water, and then I'm just going to dip it just a little bit of glazing medium in there too. So what you're going to want to do with this is load up your brush fairly thickly with paint. So I've got it scooped up there pretty well, but then I want to run the tip through the paint and bring it to a point. So I've got a nice pointy edge. It's going to be really important for our daisies. So our basic um, brush strokes for the daisies, these ones, is going to be kind of a comma stroke-ish. Um, these are kind of thinner than a regular daisy petal so the the petal the tip of the petal is kind of pointed a little bit so we're going to kind of start it by not pushing down too hard just kind of running that tip and then press down in the middle as we're pulling our petal and then lift lift the pressure and if you twist the brush a little bit it'll kind of help it come to a point. So that's going to be our basic brush stroke for these daisies. Some of them are going to come out and come back in like this. And some of them are going to be kind of more straight. And here again, I kind of need to go slow, make sure I'm getting kind of a rounded tip on these. You can always go back in and, um, you know, adjust the tip if you didn't get it quite right. Come back in and widen it out or whatever you need to do. And So these are really pretty easy, and it's a great brush stroke to learn for beginners because um, this can really be adapted to all kinds of different things. So I'm going to come just underneath where my last petal was here to do the center of my flower and dab in like this, right? So that's going to be our basic daisy shape. We're going to be doing more to it than that, but and that I kind of got them a little bit wonky, but you get the idea. I think 
think this brush should work for us. Cashmere is in the background talking to Mark. She's in the chair. Oh, she's telling you that she, she took over your, your job duties for tonight? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah, no. 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 Here you go. You can sit in your booth there. <laughs> She was hunting birdies in the house earlier today. We have birds that are trying to nest in our front door wreath. And uh, she was standing guard in the front door. And every now and then we'd hold her up and she'd bat at the window and gnaw and scare them away. <laughs> yeah, she was loving it. <sighs> okay, so I'm just going to do a different tone here. I'm going to use some of this... Um, teal, cobalt teal, and a little bit of the phthalo green, some white, and we'll use some of that in here. And I've switched to a smaller brush. Let's use some of the darker green. And now I'm going to kind of pay a little bit more attention to where my colors are and kind of go in and around some of these colors that I've already got on here. I might even kind of do some like little phantom What? Um, what are these leaf, you know, like leaf stock. shapes kind of stock? Yeah, like stems. Come through stems, thank you. You're welcome. Um, let me see. I forgot you were in your art brain there. Yeah, so I can't think. I think down here I kind of want it to be more kind of vertical brush strokes. I'm going to add some darker. This is that green and purple. Make sure. And don't be afraid of just kind of covering over what you got there. That's kind of all this, this kind of painting is all about the layering. So just kind of want it to make it look natural. The garden is going to have all these, these different layers of Oh, colors happening in the background. So in, in our photograph, you can see that. I think that's a good tip, actually, to not be afraid to cover it up. It's okay. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody has asked. <coughs> now you got me doing it. Yeah. Um, right. In the Princeton 6100 series, mm -hmm. how much bigger does a brush get every time the number goes up? So this is the, the four and the six. Here, you can see it looks like it's about an eighth to a quarter of an inch ish something like that well yeah something it, around there it doesn't double no it doesn't double huh all right so so far it looks like a hot mess which is fine we'll just keep working on it until it doesn't mm, sometimes that happens I'm going to use the cobalt teal now with my yellow, and I've got both of the yellows here, and I'm going to just use that as... Sometimes I look like a hot mess. I always look like a hot mess, pretty much. I, I read something the other day, it was like, I go from being, um, I have two looks, I have homeless and like... Um, mo runway model or something like that, you know? Yeah, <laughs> it's like those are my two looks. That is so true for me. It's like I do not put on makeup unless I'm going somewhere, <laughs> or okay somebody's coming to the house. Yeah, <laughs> poor Mark. He sees me homeless most of the time no, 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 in no, sweats no. and and. Uh, I like you looking homeless. Oh, you're sweet. <laughs> He, he is, he's not joking though. He's really sweet about that. He doesn't like me in makeup as much, so he doesn't like me wearing heavy makeup. He's always been like that, yep. which is nice for me because I'm not a huge, big makeup person either. Well, since you like me not in makeup, I figure I can return the favor. 
<laughs> you can see how much brighter this blue is going on now that the dry the background is dry too so we're going to use the blue and i'm again going to kind of use this kind of cupped i like i like that a lot and i like the uh i like it going on with the that brighter color is it's closer to what i want it to look like so let's use a little bit of white now this is just an ultramarine blue nothing else ultramarine blue and now a little bit of white and i'm just going to use the white kind of towards the inside so this bottom part will be like kind of more of our darker and mysterious this is part where the light is hitting it anyways up on the tips of the flowers so i might like pick some of these I kind of feel like these are probably, the blue is probably not going to be like sky necessarily. It's probably going to be more like like delphiniums or something like that in the background. So if you wanted to, you could even make these a tower, like a shape. Um, and I think that would look cool too, you know. So if you wanted to like turn these into a, and I might do a couple that way, you know, like find a, um, find one and just kind of make it into like a little bit more of a shaped thing instead of a random blobs. You could create some shapes back here. I like that a lot, actually. So I'm just going to do that in a couple more places. I'm not, I don't want these to be the focal point though. So I'm just trying to keep them a little bit random in the background here. Very soft looking. Nothing too, um, what is the word I'm looking for? Nothing too, uh, in your face. All right, getting the, the ultramarine blue here and adding it to this green yellow that we had up here. This was that cobalt teal and yellow mixture. And I'm gonna use some of it down here, down in the shadows. This will be kind of a little bit more of a neutral green because it's mixed with that ultramarine blue, which has a lot of purple in it. So that neutralizes the yellow, makes it a little bit more of an olive tone. And I'm pretty happy with this actually. So I'm gonna use some of this up here. And again, if you don't like this blue, you can add more, just do the greens all in here. You do not have to use this blue at all. Um, you can use as little or as much as you want. All right, I think I'm gonna call that good. I like that. I might do something light right here because I feel like there's kind of a lot of that one color. So I'm just going to grab some yellow here, a little bit of the white and some of the green and just kind of do a couple spots of like a little bit brighter yellow, white. And why did you think that you needed to do that? Because um, it was just like too much. There, there's all this motion and things going on, and then you had this kind of a solid block of color. I just thought it was kind of distracting, so I just wanted to break it up a little bit. Good tip. Mm -hmm. I'm going to throw some of this brighter yellow in some of these darker areas just to kind of... Yeah, okay, I like that. I like it pretty happy with that I think I'm going to stop there and most of this background is going to be covered up by the um, by the leaves of our plants but um, we can make sure that this bottom area is looking good too just kind of give it a another layer if, if it needs it try to do some stems for our flowers here with this. I think this should be dry-ish enough. I'm going to use the Quinacridone magenta and burnt orange. Use burnt sienna if you don't have it. And some glazing medium. I want it nice and thin because I want to draw a lot, run lines with it. So thin this out with some water. Add a little bit of glazing medium. Glazing medium just helps that paint to stick to the canvas because with acrylics, heavy body acrylics, they will not stick if they're too wet, if you add too much water to them. Okay. 
So I'm going to use this and map out sort of where I want some of my daisies. So I know I want a couple of them right here and here. So I'm going to put my stems in. Here and here. And I'm probably not going to put as many as is in our photograph. Um, there's a ton of them in here. So, and the ones over on this side, the the stems are a little bit more green. So I'm going to add a little bit more green over here to the, just use the same color, just add a little bit of green to it. Not sure why they're kind of green over here, but that's all right. Try to keep in my stems thin. If they get too thick, you can. Put a leaf or something over it. You can always hide it. Like on some of the Greek statues. What? Put a leaf. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and it looks like you're using the half inch angle. This is the three eighths inch, but you can oh, use the half inch so too. So close, just an eighth. You off. can use the three eighths inch. Okay, I'm gonna use the green, and I didn't clean out my brush, so I'm just kind of working in some of these areas here that have the green already in there. I need to add a little bit more yellow, so I'm getting some leaves. And I'm using the edge of my brush and just setting it down and kind of running some lines here to get some leafy shapes. They do not have to be super well defined. And we can add some darker color to some of them. These are going to be kind of in the dark, so. There we go. Can you even see this? A little bit. Okay. But I'll just running it kind of one, one side and then the other. Again, we're doing this very simple. So you're setting the brush down, kind of pushing down and then lifting it. It's going to create that leaf shape. And then I can kind of come around and do it, do it again on the side. I'm going to the side again. Slow motion. Okay. You have to make those bionic sounds. Just like that, yeah. Okay. That helps. The better? The sound effects. The sound effects always help. <laughs> okay. Just a little bit of leafy stuff happening there. Like that, those stems should be a little bit darker. So I'm going to get some burnt umber and some quinacridone magenta, and I'm just going to go back over some of these, especially these ones that are in that darker area, just down below here. And I'm just going to add a little bit of color now. This may be harder to go back over your lines, so if you're having trouble with it, you can just leave this part out. Or do it a little bit darker, you know, to begin with. So. Hopefully you're not painting along. Real time. I always um, suggest to folks to um, watch the entire video before they try to paint along. Because I do this from time to time. I will kind of, you know, get into a painting and then realize that I should have used a different color or done something a little bit differently. And so it's just helpful to kind of um, watch the whole thing first, get an idea of where I'm going with it, and then, then jump in feet first. All right. I'm going to get some cadmium yellow and Indian yellow hue here, making a orangey yellow, quite bright. I'm going to add some water. You always want to add water when you're using a round brush. 
It will not flow off your brush, especially heavy body acrylics. This is one of the paintings where you could really, um, I would use the thinner paints if you have them. So like a beginner um, level paint, it's going to make it a little bit easier to do this. I'm going to add just a little bit of white and the white will do two things. It'll lighten it up, but it'll also make it a little bit more opaque. So it'll go over these darker greens a little bit easier. All right, I'm going to do this and try not to hit my microphone. We'll see how it goes. You can see how see-through this yellow is. Even adding that white, it's very see-through. I'm going to add some more white to it. And it's also because I've added um, glazing medium too. The glazing medium makes the paints a little bit less, less opaque, thins them out a little bit. So we're gonna need a couple coats of paint on each of these daisies and that's normal, that's totally fine. So garden update. Mm -hmm. I got Got the cauliflower planted in the actual bed this weekend. Yes. We did. Or I say we, Mark did. <laughs> I was going to say, I didn't see you Mark out there. Did. <laughs> did that. They're kind of laying over. I'm not sure if they're that happy from going for the nice warm inside well, to the was, outside. Yeah, I know. I think we probably were supposed to, I think you were supposed to acclimate them for a couple of days before mm. you did that transplant. So the carrots are acclimating right now. I'm excited about the carrots. We got a bunch of different kinds. We've got a bunch of different colored carrots. Purple and yellow and all kinds of different. All the artsy colors. pretty looking ones. I know, they were awesome. <laughs> I went a little crazy with the carrots and the tomatoes. <laughs> We're going to have about a zillion tomatoes. I think That's I'm going to give away some tomato plants to some people at work. Oh, good. Well, we've got more than we can plant, so they will be happy to get them, I'm sure. Okay. Now I'm looking at kind of where some of these are placed, making sure that I can get um, the centers in there without having to overlap them too much. I don't want to have to paint around things. So some of these I'm going to make a little bit more kind of collapsed in on themselves. Little baby one down there. This one here is kind of facing everybody, so it's got a little bit of the back showing. And I'm not going to be able to fit all of these in here, but that's okay. I'm just going to do my best. really kind of on top of this one here so I'm gonna go ahead and do it 
we'll hope for the best here. I'm going to have to do these a little bit lighter colors for them to show up against this one. See, like that, we can do it over the top. Add some white to it. And up with paint here so every now and then I want to kind of push it to a point so I've got a good point on it just make it that much easier to work with all right so this one's one of our focal point ones so I really want to do a good job with it So it's about this point of the quiet show that I talk about Patreon.com. <laughs> <laughs> Slash Angela Fine Art. Tracer Bolt's yep. available over there. Yep. Go check it out. Check out all the levels. There's so much more painting and stuff available. Mm -hmm. I need to make this out here a little bit longer. Yeah, we've got all kinds of different stuff on there stuff that's not available on YouTube. There we go. I'm going to use the darker. I'm going to get some of this quinacridone burnt orange. I'm going to use it on some of these petals in here. Darken up the center. from the inside out. It's kind of subtle, it's not super dark, so. And we're gonna do another layer of the yellow in the opposite direction, so we're doing it from the inside out so that when we do the um, next layer of light, yellow that, that'll cover over just a little bit of this, but that middle part will be kind of a little bit more orangey, hopefully. And you can do some of the petals that we know are going to be kind of like towards the bottom. Do those like kind of fully orange. And then we can leave those when we do our yellow on top. We can leave those a little bit darker, so like these ones on this guy here, back here. I probably could have done him more orange first before I put this other one in. I'm going to go ahead and go over the top of those petals there. And then we'll just put those petals back in this way. This is the yellow and burnt orange here. A little bit of both colors. Oops, I got some gray. Got some of this blue green in here. Did not mean to do that. Okay, got a painting question. Mm -hmm. Somebody asked that if they painted a white under coating first on the flowers and mm -hmm. the yellow, would it be brighter? It it will. I'm using white in the yellow to kind of save a step. 
but yes, you can do that. I don't like doing that just because the, you can always kind of see that white layer around it, even though you're covering it up. Um, you tend to be able to see it. So I just would rather do two or three layers of yellow that has some white mixed in it than to do white. That's just my personal preference, but you could do it either way. And I know some artists that like to do it that way, so totally valid way of doing it. It's just up to you. Each, there's so many different uh, techniques and things and ways of approaching paintings. You can do them all kinds of different ways. I want something really tall, so I think I'm going to maybe put it on this side instead of over here. It's, it's over here on this one. I didn't put this one quite as high as uh, it is in the photograph. There's like another one way up here, which I guess I could put one. Let me see where I want to put it. I guess I could put it like right in here, maybe. But I kind of like the idea of having it over here. So I think I'm just going to put that one that's in the upper corner over here. and put it in the opposite direction. Okay. So let's do some of these down in here with a little bit more of the orangey color going to be maybe covered over somewhat. Okay, here's another good question. Okay. <clears throat> Somebody would like to know, is there a big difference in the value between CAD yellow medium and CAD yellow medium hue? Um, no, the value, no, I don't think so. They're, they're about the same. Um, the vibrancy of the color may be a little bit and the way it mixes will be a little bit different. So that was the main difference that I saw was the mixing, the way it mixed with other colors, the cadmium yellow. Um, the hue is just the, um, for those who don't know. The hue is just the artificial version of it, you know, to avoid the toxins that are in cadmium. Um, and it's cheaper, obviously. So um, that's another consideration. It's a lot cheaper. So uh, do the, you know, do the differences make that big of a difference? I don't know. I mean, I, I really, I feel like they do enough for me that I use the regular, the real cadmium. I prefer it. But, um, you know, that's personal preference just so all right let's do one more right in here and This one's going to kind of cover up several that are in the area around it. one right down here. There's really a little happy one right here that is facing us. So he's got his petals kind of going like this and then out. And the ones that are facing us this way are going to be a little bit shorter because they're going to be pointing almost straight at us. I 
strokes here and there, but I'm pretty happy with that. Like I think maybe I'll add some yellow coming of coming off here. Like there's one here. Kind of going off the edge there and there. It's kind of like the tip you did the other day about the clouds. Exactly, yeah. It'll look a little bit more natural if you have some that are kind of going off the edge of the canvas. And let's do like a little baby one back in here. It's like farther away. And maybe, maybe its stem is going around this, the stem is in front of it. So we can just make sure that that stem goes over the top. Um, all right, so while that's drying, let's go ahead and start on the centers of these. So I'm gonna get the quinacridone magenta. We said we were gonna use purple, remember? So I'm gonna use quinacridone and purple to make that violet color, and that was, again, the kind of the color here and really you can, can use any of these because there's the triad there's the split complementary so really we know any of these colors are going to look good with this yellow so um, that's why we use the cobalt teal a little bit in the background so we knew that kind of like that turquoise color would look good we used this color and so we're going to use I'm going to kind of use some of that magenta too to make a color that's sort of in between here for the base of our um centers so I want a little bit of that pink color in there and then we'll go back in with the very dark color and add the dark okay so some of these are like a perfect cone shape so um, and they're set down in these petals so we, we're not going to put them like right at the very top we're setting them down into the petals a little bit and then creating that kind of cone shape coming up and kind of point them in whatever direction the center of those two flowers coming in. So you can kind of see sort of by where you put your petals, sort of how, you know, what direction your center is going to go. I'm going to make this guy go a little bit more this way. I may add some petals on this side, but I want his little guy to be pointing that way a little bit. We can also use these centers to kind of control the um, kind of the direction of the eye, the way the eye flows around the canvas. So, you know, if you had them all pointing in this direction and all those centers are like pointing here, it would just like lead the eye all the way off the canvas this way. So we're going to have some going in different directions and that will just kind of help everything kind of stay tight. If that makes sense, but I'm gonna switch to a little bit smaller brush. This brush is a little bit too big for what I'm doing here. A little bit more control. And I know that I'm not gonna really mess with much of the petals in the middle. Um, I've already done the orange, so don't do this until you do that orange part in there because you don't want to have to go back over around this. There we go. This is the number two round. And give me a little bit more control here. Some of them look kind of more of like a their the tops a little bit more flattened. So just you know do some that way. They don't all have to be the same. And then the ones that are like this, they're still they're going to be more circular, but they're still going to. Call me. Will you answer that for me? Hello? It's probably recording, but... This is a I'm sure it's... I've been getting calls and emails from every, like, 
everyone I've ever come in contact with or bought anything from. So that was the health clinic in town. Just want to make sure that we get that message, whatever it is. I'm sure they're just telling us what to do in case there's cases of the virus here in Russellville, which thankfully there haven't been yet. Hopefully there won't be. You never know. Hope you all are staying safe. It's kind of a scary time. Spencer, my son's 18, he was asking me today, he was like, has anything like this ever happened before? And I was like, uh, no. <laughs> no, definitely not. <laughs> I mean, maybe before our lifetime, but definitely not in our lifetimes. That's for sure. I'm sure there's been all kinds of, you know, throughout history, there's been all kinds of different things like this happening, but, and worse, but... I've been spoiled. Okay, just going through here. I wonder if they're going to be doing testing in town. I don't know. That may have been what they were calling about, too. Fun. I add a little bit of a lighter color to this guy that was way in the background because I don't want him to be as in focus as the rest. Everything fine? Yep. They're just letting us know the new temporary procedures. Ah. In case you think you're sick. Yeah. So just to sum it up, if you think you're sick, mm -hmm. call us. <laughs> Do not come in. Exactly. <laughs> if you don't think you're sick, come on in. You're fine. <laughs> Love it. Well, I mean, the two of the cases in Arkansas were from healthcare workers that were treating the first patient that came, you know, that was in Arkansas. So, I mean, it's like, I don't think where they were ready for it. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the people that I really worry about too for sure the nurses and doctors that are having to deal with it They got just a little bit of a purple tone to them. And then I'm going to go back in with the darker purple and some of the quinacridone burnt orange, maybe, just to make it a little bit more of a brownish tone, maybe a little bit of burnt umber. And I'm going to darken up just the bottom. Tap just a few little taps. Right where it attaches. Kind of a little bit up the side. And if you want to, you can create um, a side. So like maybe our light's coming from this direction. So we can go along the back sides here where it would be away from the light and make it come up on that side just a little bit more.
So if you're wondering, if you click to show more, you can see the list of all the supplies that are being used, paints and all that, brushes, and also links to Amazon and the mm -hmm. brush guys. If you need to buy some brushes, there's a code for 5% off with this Angela Fine Art. So they're a great company to work with for sure. Yes, they've been good to us for years. Mm -hmm. Use some burnt, some ultramarine blue and white. And a little bit of that purple color that we were just using. Or we can get this magenta, more magenta color. And I'm going to use just the very, very little bit of this. You want to keep this very minimum. I'm going to use a little bit, and I may, I think, and I feel like it's a little bit too, too light. I want it to be more blue than purple, so I want it to be kind of bluish. Just at the very tips of those. I don't know if you can see that. I think I'm just going to use the ultramarine blue and just add a little bit of this. I think I think more the ultramarine blue is kind of the tone. Yeah. And then just add a little bit of that purple to it that we were just using in the dark areas. So it's got a little bit of white. I've added a little bit of white just so it's a little bit like a lighter tone. Tiny, tiny little bit. One, two, three. Just very, very, very soft. And just right on the top and maybe to one side a little bit. And I'm not going all the way to the edge either. I'm coming in from the edge just a little bit. So. out if you don't want it I don't like it it's up to you and I might I might darken that up and later we'll see once we put the second coat of the on our daisies so I'm gonna stick with this brush because a little bit smaller gives me a little bit more control and I'm gonna grab up my bright yellow Mimiola light here, and I'm going to get some of my Cadmium Yellow Medium, add white to both of them, just spray them. And water so that it thins it out. Those paints were getting dried out. If you've got little paint globs in there, you need to either fish them out or if you if they're still soluble, they'll dissolve in once you kind of mix them. But if they're hard hardened all the way, then you'll just need to fish them out and not use them. Okay, so there's a cadmium yellow medium. So we'll use both of those colors, just to alternate them. Glazy medium in with both of them. Oh my god. Okay. So this time when I'm doing this, I'm going to go, I'm really aiming for the tips. I want to brighten up those, the tips of the flowers. 
and I want to end it before I get all the way to the center. So, and if we need to, we can add more petals in too, but I don't know, we'll see. Like on this one, I think I want to leave this one maybe as a bottom petal, and I'm going to make another one that kind of goes over the top a little bit smaller right here. And maybe do the same thing over here. Do another petal like right here. So maybe this one is kind of underneath. Let me do that on a couple of these. And what we can do too is kind of outline. So if you've got some of these bigger, bigger ones, we can kind of come on either side and kind of create a like an outline of the petal. Or I think I'm gonna leave that one darker and do another little littler one in front right here. What brush are you using? This is a number two round. I believe. Let me check it. Make sure. Yeah. Numero dos. For our Spanish speaking <laughs> friends. I don't know how to say number in French. But it's de. <laughs> de. This one a little bit bigger. I just feel like it's a little too small. Oh, somebody says the same in, as in Spanish, numero de. Ah. I still remember that lady in the in the uh, flea market when yeah. you were trying to <laughs> I know. get her to go for a lower price on the buttons. Uh -huh. Yeah, <laughs> she was not having it. <laughs> she thought we were really dumb. Yep. I don't think she realized we were trying to haggle. I, we weren't doing a very good job of it, obviously. I, I really thought she was going to punch you. <laughs> <laughs> but she was accentuating. Uh. 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 <laughs> they do. Instead of one, like in the U.S., we do like this. They, get, they do lose to them. Obviously, those in French know that. Sorry. <laughs> Be condescending there. So I, I just thought it was fascinating. And she, she, it took me a while to get what she was saying to me. So obviously, I was being dense. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> She's probably a very nice lady. <laughs> I caught her at a bad moment. <laughs> She spoke no English. We spoke Shh. almost no French. <laughs> it, was, it was a wonderful time. <laughs> by all. <laughs> by all. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah. See so, yeah, how we left, like, one of those petals. Just leave every now and then. Leave one of the petals kind of dark. Give it a little depth. So given everything that's going on in the world, even if you don't have, you know, heavy body paints, just craft some paint. Paint. Get your mind off the thing. Yes. Well, paint there's a your... lot of people having to stay home for various reasons. So this yeah. one's one you could try try with your kids probably. Exactly. Paint with your kids, your friends, your family, whatever. Yeah, you, know, you can't have your friends over on. But they could, like, do a conference call with their friends. If they're maybe. socially distanced. Yes. That's going to be the term of 2020. Social distancing. All I'm saying is that I'm loving being at work right now. I am I am kind of sad because it's kind of messed up my birthday and my dad's. 
I know. It was a big birthday for me. I'm turning 50 this year, and we can't get go out with my friends or go to my dad and celebrate with him. Boy, that makes me feel really good. Well. I know. I'm not your friend. <laughs> I know. You know what I mean. You're expecting a better time. <laughs> not. <laughs> I mean, I can make you an impressive birthday cake, you know. Mark made me the worst birthday cake in the history of all birthday cakes one year. It was the best gift ever. Hold on, hold on. Wait a minute. Remember. Do you have a picture of it? It's the thought that counts. Oh, my gosh. It was awesome. It it was good until... <laughs> it, he, was, it was perfectly timed, too. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do that made it... I don't remember what happened exactly. I don't remember the timing, but so it, it when, came out of the so oven. It, it was a layer cake, right? And I didn't know that you're you were supposed to like it like it over puffed, so that like the tops were really round, right? And I knew that you're supposed to flip them like top to top, <clears throat> but since they were so round, they weren't very level, and I didn't like cut it or flatten it any, so I frosted it. And then as Angela's in there looking at it, we're all excited. And then the, the, the top just slowly slid off. No, it cracked down the middle. It, it cracked. And then yeah, it, it cracked, cracked down the middle. And it slid off. There was, yeah, there's two. <laughs> he put two rounded, <laughs> two rounded cakes side by side like this. So there was like this huge cavern right here mm -hmm. of icing. Like that was just like there was, they weren't touching at all. And, and then, yeah, the top one just kind of decided to crack and fell off. <laughs> As it was hilarious. It's the best gift, gift birthday <laughs> cake ever. Yeah, I'm not that good of a baker. Hilarious. We laughed so hard. <laughs> I mean, it, it was just, better than a perfect cake, though. You know, I mean, it was, it, it was definitely the thought that counts on that one. And it was just because it happened while we were watching it. Right, exactly. <laughs> it's like it's, we're all standing around. Right. It's yeah. like we didn't leave and it was perfect, came back, it was a mess, and didn't know what happened. We, right, right. Yeah, it, no, it, we watched it happen in real time. It yeah, was it just it, died in front of us. It was the uh yeah. It well actually it cut itself. It saved us time. <laughs> it did cut itself. <laughs> it did it cut itself it like perfectly it was awesome. Oh my gosh. You need to make me cake again this year. That's what I want, since I can't go out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We'll film it this time. Hopefully, you got to do it the same exact way. Hopefully, they have cake mix at the store. <laughs> <laughs> Probably won't. Oh, that's true. I didn't think about that. We should have gotten cake mix. Just ordered groceries. Oh my uh, goodness! So funny. I love it. See, aren't these coming out good? Mm -hmm. They're they're definitely. Oh yeah. And they're not too hard. I don't. I really don't think so. I. I would tell you. So let's leave this one kind of darker in general. And then we'll just do this these petals over the top of this right here, nice and bright. And so I'll kind of push that one back a little bit. He got stuck in the background there. And if you want to, you know, it an easier way obviously would be to not um, not overlap your flowers at all. You know, just to keep them separated. It looks more natural this way, but, you know, so it's up to you. Mm, Mark, what are you doing back there? I'm going to just put this one on top. I know it was supposed to be behind, but it just, it wants to be on top. So we're just going to put it okay with the rest of the big boys. So this person asked a question. I was looking to see what kind of paint you use, and it's, it's the exact same kind they just bought. Oh, good. So they said they just bought a new tube of uh -huh. the CP CAD Yellow Medium uh -huh. PY35. Right. At two ounces. Mm -hmm. Why is it so expensive? <laughs> it's because of the pigment that they use in there. It's the pigment. Um, the You can tell um, by the numbers on the tube series, series, the series 7. So Series 7 paints are your most expensive. And then... Series four, like the phthalos, are less expensive. They're all different numbers. So, yeah, burnt umbers is series one. So it's going to be your cheapest um, paint 
pigment and it just has to do with the the expense of the pigment itself and so they all have these series numbers um so you can tell that the pigment is really expensive on those ones so all the quinacridones and the cad the cadmiums are going to be super super expensive to well actually cadmium here is, is series nine <laughs> cadmium red is series nine <laughs> so it's even more expensive than the yellows That's just, yeah, that just has to do with the, the cost of the raw materials is more expensive on those. So they pass it along the consumer, which is good. You know, I mean, they don't have it. It's not like craft acrylics and things, you know, where they're, they're all kind of lesser quality um, pigments. And so it doesn't matter, you know, with these, you're getting the, you're paying for the pigment. You're not, you know, you're not paying for the brand. You're paying for the actual pigment that you're getting. All right, so we're almost done and then we can splatter it. And I wanna add some more stems to a couple, like this one has no stem coming to him. Um, right over here, so he needs one. Let's go ahead and put that in while I'm thinking about it because I'll forget. And then same thing with this one here. I wanna. Give him a little stem. So I'm just going to continue this one up and over. Because it kind of started here. So we'll just kind of pretend like it curved right there behind that, that dude. Is that the same number two round? What? Is that the same number two round mm -hmm. you're using? Okay. be a few weeks and then the daisies will start coming up yeah all of the uh yeah we're kind of premature on the daisies today i guess yeah. it's not quite that time well of year, very few people know that the traditional flower of saint patrick's day was the daisy i don't think that's but true. they were tired of dying them green all the time so then they just went with the shamrock <laughs> don't don't fact check that but it, it's true that may or may not be true. hashtag St. Patty Facts. Let's <laughs> check two true facts. <laughs> oh my gosh, Mark. I mean, they use a lot less green dye nowadays because they don't have to do that. They had to save it for the rivers that they dye. And the beer, I guess. In, in uh, Boston. Mm-hmm. What if they still did that today, even though people aren't like out in the bars allowed to celebrate together? It's kind of sad. It's like all both of the holidays that you know, like Mardi Gras and Spring Break and St. Patrick's Day, all the mm -hmm. pagan holidays are are being ruined. Well, all I can say is that as an introvert really enjoying work i never went anyways yeah i know like we weren't into that anyways yeah. so it doesn't affect us but i do i do uh think about i feel sorry for all those kids who were planning their you know big senior trips or something for mm -hmm. spring break and don't get to go now yeah. thankfully spencer didn't have anything like that planned although he is planning on going to germany this summer which Probably is not going to happen yeah, at this point. Exactly. <laughs> Sadly. He's graduating. I don't even know if his graduation is going to happen like a normal Yeah, that would be interesting. Yeah. I never even thought of that, all the mm -hmm. graduations coming up. Yeah. Uh-huh. And proms, if proms hadn't been done yet, you know, some of the schools might not have. We just got ours, did ours. <laughs> Here, but you know, some of them might have been later, and I'm sure they, I don't know, it's just scary, it's weird. Definitely a strange world, a 
strange times. Mm -hmm. I'm highlighting all of these all the way around, leaving that dark center. So just kind of lifting up and I'm letting that kind of brush sort of drag so that it's creating kind of a broken lines. But if you, um, you know, if you want it smoother, um, you can pull it all the way to the center and then you could, you could wait to do this in, uh, toward, until after you finish all your petals if you want them to all be, um, you know, a little bit cleaner looking. That's up to you. Okay, and then I'm going to use some white. Just do some really bright. Lots of white. And just use this yellow. Here, I'm going to mix up quite a bit of it. Pull it to a point, and then I'm just going to pick a few petals that I think you know, are on our sunny side maybe, sunny side up, and kind of pop some highlights on those. And just, just on this one side maybe, maybe in the middle a little bit, but then on this side I'm going to leave them kind of darker. It doesn't have to be all of them. Maybe these ones are getting the light. I could do, these ones might be brighter, you know, right here. Maybe the, they're poking out a little bit more. Think about where the petal's laying on top of the other petals. And just pick a few that you think might be getting a little bit more sunlight because they're sort of raised up ahead of, on top of the other ones around it. So pretty. Mm -hmm. I love this. And again, I'm going even smaller with this. I'm not, I'm, I'm keeping it well inside the boundaries of where we painted before. So, just kind of hitting the bare very highlight kind of tips of the petals. Obligatory neighbor's car? Well, no, I think it's the kid down on the four wheelers. Oh, is it? Okay. Sound like a four wheeler. That's okay. That's why I'm here. <laughs> oh, look at that. So cute. Very fun. You could put a butterfly right here. Mm. But it's it's late, so I won't do that to Mark, but you might do one on yours. And if you do, share it with me because I want to see it. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to use a little bit of the quinacridone magenta here. I'm just going to kind of glaze. It's kind of watered down. I'm just going to kind of glaze in here. Maybe glaze a little bit on a little bit of quinacridone, a little bit of the burnt orange. This this is the next step up. So if you don't have the glazing medium, you can just use a little bit of water. Um, but you just want to kind of thin your paint out and just going to add kind of a shadow on our daisies right there, right at the bottom where they're attaching. We've already got it a little bit darker, so you may not, you know, need to do too much of this. And if you want to use um, a different color, you can use, you know, more of a burnt orange or something like that. I'm using a little bit of the quinacridone magenta just because it'll, it'll turn orange since it's going over yellow. So I'm not worried about it. Um, being too 
right? And then you can also check and make sure that none of your petals went over the top of your um, centers of your flowers. So if they did, you can clean those up now. But yeah, there we go. So you can see the ones that I did the um, shadow and the ones that I haven't yet. So, you know, decide if you like it, like that look or not. I'm going to use a little bit more of the quinacridone, which is a quinacridone orange, I think. Let's go in here and light. And you can kind of use your finger to rub out the extra. Make sure that you do this after your yellow is dry, though. You don't want to do this while your paint is wet. And it'll be actually more on the shadow side, you know, so you can do it a little bit darker maybe on this side. We're kind of manufacturing the shadow thing, so it's not actually in our photograph. And we're, we've obviously made up and kind of, you know, adapted this photo quite a bit. So, and that's fine. I, made, I wanted to simplify it some to make it a little bit more beginner friendly. onto the petals you can shadow some of your petals so if you say like I think this one needs to be darker or I want the shadow to go more along you know this side of the petals you can pull some of that down onto the petals it's up to you that petal was not dry Every one of these layers just adds another little bit of, you know, realism. And you feel free to stop at any point that you're happy with your painting. So it's your, your art. I'm just kind of showing you how I approach, how I would approach doing something like this. Try to give you some confidence to go ahead and try it yourself. That's the whole reason we do these videos. It's just going to help you get a head start so when you try to paint that you have a little bit easier time of it hopefully but definitely not the only right way of approaching art there's all kinds of different ways of doing it so this is just my interpretation <laughs> makes sense mm -hmm. good okay I think I'm gonna give him a four leaf clover For St. Patty's Day, we're just gonna stick one down. We'll do one right in here. Totally leave this out if you don't want it. We're just doing it for fun. This is St. Patrick's Day. Why not? I got a question. Mm -hmm. One person wants to know, they said that the reference photo background is a little bit more fuzzier. How could they get that effect? 
Um, I've done several videos uh, with kind of fuzzier backgrounds. Probably, um, oh, like the, I'm trying to think of which ones would be similar to this. Um, well, if you used, if you used the, um, I'm trying to think of which video I just did. I just did daisies, white daisies recently. Um, that one was a real fuzzy. Um, but if you use the, the, um, uh, stippler, different stippler, then you can go in and, um, maybe use a little, little glazing medium and you can do like little areas and then, um, wipe, rub around the sides of them to blend them in. And when you do your, you know, all of your different, uh, different details in your background here, um, instead of doing like, you know, brush strokes, you can use this brush and kind of blend them in as you put them on and it, it'll soften it up. You can also glaze over the top like I'm doing here and kind of soften it up that way too. So just however you want to do it but there I've got several different videos on that oh the the um probably one of the best ones is the red it's called oh what's it called bright floral I think if you look up bright floral um and it's got red and blue um and yellow it's real real vivid um and the whole background of that one is this kind of real soft blendy stuff so that'd be a real good one to do all right, I'm going to use quinacridone magenta and some white. And I probably should have done this before I did my daisies. So just full disclosure, this is probably going to need to take a lot of these off. But And get yourself a paper towel. Make sure you watered your paint down really well. You should be able to see through the palette when you scrape it through. So it should be kind of the consistency of milk. And then dab it on your paper towel just a little bit to get off the extra. I'm not minding it too bad over the top of the daisies. It's not, it's not all that bright but if you get too much of it on your daisies and you don't like it then you can dab it off with your paper towel while it's still wet but I'm not gonna leave that I think I like it so and I'm gonna use some my green and teal maybe a little bit of my ultramarine blue if I have any left there we go you a little bit darker why did you use that choose that pink color for the splatter um because it's kind of already in our background but i wanted something dark so it'll add a different kind of color to it but it'll go when i know it'll blend with everything so okay there we go and then like i said if you make sure your daisies are dry before you do that, because you do not want to have to try to take this paint off of a wet flower. It will lift the whole thing and kind of ruin your day, so kind of like that there. Don't, I don't ever listen to my own advice, so <laughs> if you're new to the channel, you'll know that. Don't do what I'm about to do. That's not, that's not nothing new. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to. Um, yeah, and I kind of don't love, I, I kind of wish it was a little bit lighter. Whoops. Gosh darn it. I just tried to get that hair off of there and I, I, yeah, well, I, And make sure you're using a damp paper towel yes. to do this. Yes. You can do the Angela technique. Spit. Lick it first and then do it. 
I do. I like it. <laughs> they probably could tell. It's going off camera. Just like that. Spit works really well. Mama spit though. A lot of my paintings have my spit on them. <laughs> 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 it's true. <laughs> the snow don't do it <laughs> there I like the white these are totally optional too if you don't like the little splatters you don't have to do them I don't know why you wouldn't but it's it's I won't I'll judge you a little bit but <laughs> <laughs> only a little <laughs> no, <laughs> no I'm joking <laughs> totally joking <laughs> I was like, when people are like, I don't like the splatters, I'm like, really? Okay. Um, all right. To each his own. Okay. Yeah, that's fun. I don't see any major areas. We added our little four leaf clover there. Um, and I'm going to grab my three aught round. And use it to sign with my yellow. Got some super chat. Yes, we have a super awesome. chat. <clears throat> Tonight's super chat is from, I'm going to destroy her name, so I'm sorry. It's Patty, P A I D I. Something like that, so I apologize. And they say, thank you for sharing. Your art is so much needed and appreciated. Oh. Well, thank you so much for the support. I love it. Very happy to, to be doing this. And thank you very much for your support. That mm -hmm. means a lot to us. It really does. So the question came out. Uh huh. Are you painting Thursday? I am painting Thursday. Yes. So the ten dollar level face uh, Patreon group will be painting. Yes, we're painting. We'll be doing part five on this, I think. Yeah. So we got two more weeks to finish it, and uh, we'll be finishing the fabrics and probably the plate, and then on the last week we'll probably work on the finishing the apricots. So, but yeah. And then we will be here Saturday. We will, yes. Because our plans have changed, like yes, everybody's. I know. <laughs> yeah, so we hope you guys will join us since you are you can't go outside anyways. Hopefully you'll... <laughs> and the show Saturday is free. With us. Free here on YouTube. Yep, it sure is. Sure is. All righty. There we go. There we have it. Daisies. It was super fun. I kind of wish I'd done something up in here now. It's kind of bothering me, but... I'm not going to mess with it right now. So So is the uh, video link posted for Saturday? Is it? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's in my schedule. So if you, um, but it, it's all, it's already on my channel too. So if you okay, get my name make sure. or photo, it'll take you to my channel page. You can see it. But okay. yeah, it's at 2 p.m. regular time um, on Saturday. We It was originally going to be earlier because we were going to have guests. But so we put it back to our normal 2 o'clock time period and... Yeah, so we'll be back on Saturday as normal. And uh, then, yeah, the rest of the month, we don't have any other changes to our schedule. So, And if you want to see the entire schedule, I have it posted on Instagram on my Patreon page. So if you go to Patreon there, it's the very first post at the very top of my page. Um, and uh, all, all over Facebook, too. So, 
yeah, below this video. There's links to all those social media that you can check it out. Yeah. There is a free Facebook group to show to sign up for. Yes. Yep. Yeah, that Facebook group is a lot of fun. Yes, it is. So, all right, guys. Thanks so much for hanging out with us tonight. Stay safe. Wash your hands. All that good stuff. Don't cough on anybody. <laughs> Stay home. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.